everybody, welcome back to the channel. This is MTG Gould, and today we're going to be covering some of the uh, Outlaws at Thunder Junction spoilers that they released at Magic Con Chicago. So without further, without any further ado, let's go on ahead and get into the Outlaws of Thunder Junction. And this is going to be a standard set. So we're going to start out with Duelist of the Mind, which kind of sounds like a uh, something from Yu-Gi-Oh, I swear it has to be. But for one and one blue, it's a star three with flying and vigilance, human advisor to go into those advisor travel decks. And its power is equal to the number of cards you've drawn this turn, so it could change per turn. Whenever you commit a crime, you may bet you may draw a card. If you do discard a card, this ability triggers only once each turn. And I don't believe that they gave any information out on the uh on what committing a crime is Fibblefip lost on the range where they're bringing back Fib Fibblefip is lost everywhere so it doesn't matter but for one and two blue it's a one one with ward two you may look at the top card of your library at any time Top card of your library has plot. The plot cost is equal to its mana cost. You may play plot non-land cards from the top of your library. Ah. Huh. That's interesting. It would be interesting to see what plot is. Then we have Tiny Bones Pickpocket. For a single black, it's a 1-1 one, one with Death Touch. Whenever it deals combat damage to a player... You may cast target non-land permanent card from that player's graveyard. And mana of any type can be spent to cast this spell. It could be a good thief deck if you... Or you could use it in regular Tiny Bones and just whenever they discard something, that's whenever you can do it. It would be pretty good as a commander and in the 99 of other Tiny Bones decks. And then we do have the Wanted poster that the the wanted poster frame that they're they're trying out here i kind of like it but i don't like how it's a screen you're looking at a screen in the picture art in the art that's the art box around the box but yeah looks pretty neat hell to pay for x and a red it's a sorcery and deals x to x damage to target creature create a number of tap treasure tokens Equal to the amount of excess damage dealt to that creature this way. So if it's if you pay two in it, you get one damage on the creature and one is excess, so you get a treasure. That's not bad. It's only bad if you can find a way to make all of your spells do that. Yeah, like if you just copy this, so you get that many more treasures yeah it gets pretty that that could probably get pretty pretty wild and now we come on come across oko the ringleader so he's apparently going to be one of the big bads but it looks like he's kind of fading away in that picture like he's found a way out or something but he is still a Planeswalker, and for two generic, a green and a blue, he has, starts off with three loyalty. And I, this looks like it's going to be a static ability. At the beginning of combat on your turn, Oko the Ringleader becomes a copy of up to one target creature you control until on a turn, except he has Hexproof. That's pretty decent. Uh, For one mana, you draw... No, one mana. Plus one, and you can draw two cards. If you've committed a crime this turn, discard a card. Otherwise, discard two cards. Oh, so you draw two, then you discard two. Huh. That could be pretty interesting. Feed into your Sultai uh, graveyard shenanigan decks. Minus one, create a 3-3 green elk creature token. Yep, that You're going to see where that plays into what they did with the art on the next one with that. And as minus five, is for each other non-land permanent you control, create a token that's a copy of that permanent. Wow. Big, big multi-token popping out. 
red flags going off there. Simic doing Simic stuff. And this is the alternate art with the elk and him doing his weird magic. And this is his wanted poster. Yeah, I'm still not digging the the like the electronical tablet look going around the on the frame. I feel like they could have just left it, you know, like did the lettering in blue and green or something. Yeah, kind of kind of just doesn't look right. A little off to me. But then we do have some of the ba the basic lands and these to me are gorgeous. I love these cuz this one is actually really nice. That one you can see the water drop as it, you know, as a, the waterfall falls over it. The mountain, the swamp, of course, had to probably be had to definitely be the easiest one to look for. The mountain is actually pretty cool because it's kind of like a Zendikarian mountain where it's just like still floating and stuff like that. Still pretty cool in my opinion, though. And then we have the forest, which I don't see the. Oh, I do see the tree. It's in the shadow of the spines. That's actually pretty neat. There's some things you just really kind of have to look at. And then we have a couple of... They have a set of cards that are going to be new cards for standard. And these are like the showcase list cards, kind of sort of. But the this set still has its own list. I believe it's like... They call them vault cards. And it's going to be like new swords and stuff. I didn't get any of them. But these are some more of the, I think these are like alternate border, but they're going to be kind of like the this, uh, this archive cards. So those should be pretty cool. We got a thought season, a thought season and extended art, and that's going to be a pretty foil. And then we have crime and punishment, or crime or punishment, which are very steep calls and that is the extended art version but that is all i have for today with the spoilers from outlaws of thunder junction i'm probably going to be doing the other two uh in a row like i'm going to do uh outlaws then uh what was the other one Modern Horizons 3 and then Assassin's Creed in those orders on different days. But for now, that is going to be it. And I will see you guys next time in the graveyard.